One of the most exciting and depressing parts of traveling to Morea and like doing this long-term sampling of these corals has been like directly observing how these corals are changing. So when we set out our first experiment, you know, we tagged all these healthy individual corals around this island. And then this past summer when we went back, you know, ocean temperatures were way higher than normal. And we saw, like, I personally witnessed this massive bleaching event where almost every coral on the reef is like stark white. Like they look like they're glowing. So, you know, that is like, was an incredibly depressing visual of climate change to me um, and really powerful to also witness and, and very motivating as well. As reefs are declining, we are looking for bright spots or um, individuals of the coral host or types of symbionts that might contribute to particular coral colonies surviving in the face of stress. This project is ultimately cool because the, it looks at both the coral genetics and the symbiont genetics to try to understand which coral colonies do well and which ones die under different kinds of stressors. We are looking at the whole community context. So sort of not only which symbiont members are there, but also sort of the group dynamics might be important too. These dinoflagellate symbionts that we're looking at are not the only type of symbiont in corals and they're not the only type of symbiont that influences coral health. And so what the lab is trying to do is understand how not just dinoflagellates, but also bacteria and viruses that infect the coral colony or dinoflagellates or bacteria, any of these members that make up a coral colony, sort of how, how all of that interacts with, it, with each other to potentially influence the fate of a coral colony.